My name is Johnny Costa, and I was born in a small town called Arnold, Pennsylvania. And I remember that when I thought about music, I remembered my father carrying me on his shoulders when we went to visit relatives, and I must have been maybe three years old, and I heard people that had a Victrola in the night, and I would hear songs like Ramona and Three O'Clock in the Morning, and they stayed with me. I just wondered about music. Then the next time I remember that I was five years old, and I just loved a song called Walking My Baby Back Home. In those days, we had no radio. There was very little music in our lives. And so a peddler came to the door one day and said to my mother, why don't you take this violin and see if your little boy doesn't want to be a musician? So I took the violin out. And of course, it had no rosin. I didn't know anything about that. So I couldn't get a sound out of it. So I plucked it as I would if it were a guitar. I didn't like it very much. And then my cousin had an accordion, and he was taking lessons, and I was fascinated with that. And I thought, well, I ought to have one of those, don't you think? So my dad eventually, in order to buy me one, had to sell his house. And so I played an accordion quite good. I played all the overtures and things like that. I played the accordion until I was about 13 or 14. And then it was so heavy, my dad it would have to carry it to all the school programs and things like that. And I didn't want my dad coming in his work clothes when I was being aware of girls. So I thought, gee, I see all these pianos around here. I think I ought to play the piano. You don't have to carry anything. And I had a high school teacher that says, you should play the piano. At that time, he also discovered that I had perfect pitch. And that was wonderful. So anyway, I eventually got to play the piano, and I studied with a wonderful teacher called Martin Meisler, who taught Oscar Levant. And he came into our town once a week, and I studied with him, got some formal training, played all sorts of engagements, and did well until the Second World War, at which time they decided that I wouldn't be a musician. So they gave me a gun and put me in the 90th Division, and I wound up landing six hours after H hour on D-Day in Normandy, France. And then the war was going on, but I got rheumatic fever, and so they had to send me back. And I remember that I was in the hospital for a year. They wouldn't let me move because it affected the heart. And I remember when, after a year, I touched the piano, and though I was weak, I could play as well as ever. And I knew at that moment that I think I had a direct line to the Lord. And then I went to college and studied with a wonderful man, a composer, Nikolai Lopotnikov, and I have two degrees in music. One is a public school music education degree, which I've never had to use, but that was kind of an insurance policy. Along the way, I got to meet wonderful people like Art Tatum, and I just recently have been told that he came into Pittsburgh one time to play, and Lenny Littman, a newspaper man, wanted me to meet him for the first time. Those days I really liked to imitate him. So I was playing in the background, and as he walked in, he heard the music, and he said to Lenny, he says, oh good, you've got my record on. So I thought that was a wonderful compliment. I realized that I would have to not be a copy of anybody, even though I could do it quite well. And people would say, well, you've got to have your own style. You've got to be different. And I didn't realize that that was inherent. I mean, it was there, but it didn't come out until after it was mixed with some training from the wonderful Bach and Beethoven and people like that, and particularly Chopin. My first venture was with a band that lived in New York but didn't play in New York because it wasn't successful enough it was called Tommy Reynolds and he was a kind of a maybe a second-rate artist Shaw but a great band and he was the first band that I was with and I enjoyed it and then there was a band with the 90th division that I wrote a couple of charts for I didn't do too much with bands really I always kind of liked the small group. I loved to listen to Goodman and uh, Shaw and later on, of course, Boyd Rayburn and wonderful people like that. As a matter of fact, I love to imitate a big band at the keyboard. 
Of course, it doesn't sound like saxes and brass, but I can absolutely play Artie Shaw's beginning, beginning exactly like the record. That's the kind of image that I have. I just don't focus on one aspect. I think I like all kinds of things. I kind of liked Earl Garner, and he was a Pittsburgher. I got to know him. Even today, I will use some things that he did. I liked Oscar Peterson a little later on when I heard him. There are not many people, though, that I wanted to emulate. I figured if I'm going to steal, I'm going to steal from the very top. Surprisingly, thinking about the masters, maybe once in a while there'll be a song that's just absolutely appropriate for Bach, because his rhythmic impulse was so close to what we do in jazz. So it's metrical, it's mathematical, and it's fun. At the same time, I have a certain softness that I have to add, even if I'm playing Bach. I've never lost sight of the fact that music has dynamics, and unfortunately, too much music is all the same volume, the same level, and I try to avoid that. There are times when I could be very, very quiet, and times when it needs to be really strong. I think one time when I was playing the Embers in New York, people would come and be rather noisy, so one time I decided that if I got very, very quiet, where they could almost not hear me, it would bring the house down. It's a great trick. I think that's so important in music, and of course the contrapuntal and linearity of the music, all of those facets, I think, help to make it interesting. And also, I honor the man that wrote the song. If I'm playing Over the Rainbow, it's got to sound a little bit like Over the Rainbow. I never could lose the melody too much. I did my first record on Savoy. Somebody had heard me and said, you want to make a record? I said, oh, sure. So we went to New Jersey and we did it. And from that record, I got to be on the Steve Allen show and recorded other records, Coral and Dot. And we played the Embers through the years and I got to meet some wonderful people. Then my job in Pittsburgh was a musical director of KDK Television, which was the first radio station, I think, in the world, and I was musical director of that station for 15 years, and after that, these engagements just seemed to follow one another. I met a man called Fred Rogers, and he had a television program for children, and I thought, oh, I don't think I want to play children's music. And I said, I'd like to do the program, but I think I need to play music as I would play it for anybody. And I was so pleased that children have good ears, have a good sense of rhythm, and they took to it. They liked it. I was able to do the program in a jazz way, satisfying myself, and so it was a happy association which I'm still a part of, and that almost takes me up to today.